we shall look at the crevice corrosion of metals and uh, uh, in details today. Before we start discussing about the crevice corrosion further, it will be worthwhile to recollect what we have been discussing on crevice corrosion ok. So, so recap. Now, we looked at the mechanism right. First of all, uh, the crevice corrosion, the origin of that is due to the formation of a crevice, which can happen because of let us say when you have a joints in the, in the metal structures such as uh, a flange joint or a rivet or an expansion joint or a threaded joints as you see in the fasteners. These are coming out of the, the design parameters ok. It can also arise out of the, the other reason where like you have some deposition taking place because of the environment is not it. We also call that as under deposit corrosion taking place. So, these are the factors um, that leads to the formation of the crevice. Now, why does the crevice corrosion occur? Can anybody recollect? What is the basic requirement? Yeah? Is that the is the primary reason for that? Huh? Yeah? Is that what it is? What is the primary reason? What why does it start primarily? in crevice corrosion. So, the formation of the differential aeration cells right. The basic is that there is a concentration of oxygen between the two locations starting point. So, the point is that the starting point comes because of differential Why would the differential aeration lead to this problem? First of all, what kind of metals the crevice corrosion occurs? The passive metals. So, only in the passive metals, you know, so called passive metals, the crevice corrosion occurs. So, in such a situation, what is the role of differential aeration? Means what? For example, there are locations where the oxygen concentration is very high, there are locations where the oxygen concentration is very less. So, what happens due to this? Yeah? The limiting current density may be, yeah, the limiting current density might increase uh, when the oxygen concentration is more. So, what happens? Which one? Suppose you have more limited current density, will it become active or passive? Passive. So, when you have higher oxygen concentration, the metals tend to become passive. The one where the oxygen concentration is less, the metal tend to move towards active potentials. So, the, the crevice you know starts you know corroding over a time period because Again, we say that it is diffusion controlled. When you say crevice, it is 
it is it is no convection right the dimension is so small there is no convection. And so, the diffusion process and so the oxygen within the crevice with the time steeply decreases and so that becomes an anode that is the starting point of that. So, what happens again in the crevice why would the corrosion So, in the crevice what drives the crevice? What is the difference between a crevice and the outside the crevice? One is oxygen concentration. So, start with happens ok. Subsequently what happens? When the corrosion proceeds the crevice establishes its own environment different from what you find externally right. So, it establishes an environment. So, it is it is a localized environment. If you, if you can browse your notes you will see that right. In the crevice what is happening over a time period you will see that what happens? It forms it creates an acidic environment. If the environment has chlorides, the chlorides migrate towards the crevice. So, here what happens the pH drops significantly and you have chlorides. So, the passive metals they start depassivating actually ok. So, it becomes totally active the corrosion occurs. So, it establishes a localized environment which is different from the external surfaces because external surfaces are open there is a convection taking place and so there is the pH is not going to drop at all ok. So, the localized environment that is the reason for that. So, this leads to growth and stability of the crevice. So, we have seen uh, these factors right. Since it is it is it is a crevice what happens that is no or poor convection. of the electrolyte. So, migration only due to what? Migration only due to diffusion. So, this is a it is a kind of basic mechanism we, we saw in the last class. Now, we know that this is a industrial problem that we need to find a solution to the problem. In order to find a solution to the problem, you must know what are the factors or the parameters that affect the the crevice corrosion right. So, we need to you need to understand it is very interesting that the foremost important factor is the crevice itself. So, geometry of the crevice one important factor. Second factor is the environment. Of course, when you have an environment it also decides the electrochemical factors. The 
the fourth metallurgy of this right. So, these are the factors broadly I would say that influence the crevice corrosion of metals right. So, let us see this in details. Um, one after another let us take the crevice. When I say crevice I, I was meaning that it is a geometry. Yeah. Why the geometry must be important? Yeah, why should the geometry important? That is right. Because the crevice corrosion more often is a transport control and the transport through the diffusion process. So, the geometry will play important role because that is going to decide the how the diffusion will occur within the crevice ok. In fact, you would notice that you know the metal dissolution for ok. In fact, more resistant metals more corrosion resistant metals become susceptible to crevice corrosion. So, it is no wonder that you know some cases the corrosion occurs some cases corrosion does not occur. The environment may be the same, but if the crevice geometry the crevice dimensions change then the extent of crevice damage could change ok. For example, I would say you know 904 L is a stainless steel ok it has let us say 20 percent chromium and 25 percent nickel, 4.5 percent molybdenum and 1.5 percent copper. It is supposed to be far better than 316, 317 stainless steels ok. You see the high amount of nickel, high amount of chromium, but it is is prone to crevice corrosion, but 7030 what is this is a copper nickel alloy is not prone. Yes, corrosion. So, very interesting thing ok. Now, let us take let us take a crevice and see what kind of dimensions will affect the crevice corrosion right. One dimension is the crevice width right and this is the crevice length right. Suppose, I have an environment here this side where will the crevice corrosion occur and will the depth of attack is going to be same throughout ok. So, you need to look at this let us look at this and you please tell me ok. Let us take the W width if the width is increasing what will happen to crevice corrosion yeah the crevice corrosion 
will decrease. So, it increases the crevice corrosion. Why does it happen? Yeah? The stagnancy is reduced. In other words, there can be uh, you know, more convection, right. So, because of that, the oxygen concentration within the crevice would increase if the width of the crevice is increasing. This is an irony of that, right. If you talk about a flange joint, suppose I take a flange and join like suppose I take a flange joint, right. Suppose I make a flange, you guys might have known the flanges, right. Suppose there is a flange joint, suppose I want to tighten this out. From the mechanical engineering point of view, what do you expect to happen? You expect that the gap should be decreasing, then only it is going to be leak proof, less vibration. So, typically these mechanical joints are expected to be as tight as possible. The crevice width has to be as small as possible, then only that becomes an effective joint, otherwise it becomes a leak, right. So, that means inherently the good joints will suffer more crevice corrosion than joints which are which are looser, but you cannot help it, you have to have tight ones, right. So, this is a real problem in practice. So, the width is, is, is an important one. If the sur you know you can also talk about other one a metal and a metal interface ok. One, two a metal and a non metal interface. like for example, a rubber for example ok. Which of the two joints will suffer more corrosion? I have a metallic gasket, I put other way I have a metallic gasket and other case I have you know other a rubber gasket will corrode more you are right why, why do you think so? Some people force things uh, or I mean the, the just I mean it is right I mean rubber rubber will have problem, but that what is the reason for that? Suppose if, if I have to tighten this right with a metal and metal and metal and rubber, what will happen from the point of view of this crevice width? Where the more uh, you know where the width of the crevice is more in metal and metal or metal and rubber? So, you, so the crevice dimension also depends upon what kind of joints you are going to have and metal and rubber the crevice gap is going to be small and so you would have more crevice corrosion compared to um, metal and metal skins ok. So, the two suffers more. Let us take the other effect of that. Now, the here is the environment. is the length through which where do you think the crevice corrosion here will be the more this is the crevice right this is the, the crevice. Where do you think the crevice corrosion will be more yeah 
they made it ok. And I, so, at least you can say that the crevice corrosion at the mouth of the crevice is not going to be there at all. Why do, why do you think so? The oxygen there will be reasonable amount of oxygen present there the crevice mouth will be passivated right. So, here you find will be passivated right. Why? Because the oxygen positive pressure is 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 ok, is good. The oxygen partial pressure decreases from the mouth to the inferior and after some time it becomes almost it is not going to vary at all right. So, what will happen is that crevice mouth is going to be a cathode and all these areas are going to be the anode. Now, the cathode drives the corrosion of the anode right is not it. The cathode drives the corrosion of the anode. Now, what also have can happen is that if the distance between the anode and cathode is increasing, what will be the effect of cathode on the anode? Keeping other parameters same right, keep other parameters same ok, assume that the, the chemistry of the electrolyte inside this crevice is same and this is the anode and the cathode, but if I move away from here inside what will be the effect of this cathode? on the anode will would you the cathode drives the anode right and because there is a potential difference between the anode and the cathode right. So, that is this is going to be relatively positive and this is going to be relatively negative. Now, when I start moving from here to this what will happen to this driving force it will decrease right. So, the corrosion rate decreases because of this ok. The corrosion rate due to cathodic influence decreases. But the oxygen concentration, what about oxygen concentration? The oxygen concentration in this case concentration decreases right from here to this, but the potential driving potential decreases. So, that means somewhere in between you are going to have high corrosion rate, and after that the corrosion rate will start decreasing. So, you will find that somewhere here ok more attack because as you move away from this the effect of the cathode on the anode decreases. So, it does not like galvanic cell right galvanic corrosion right. So, you will have more just below the mouth of the corrosion. So, this leads to ok just below the mouth of the crevice corrosion ok, the corrosion is more. Now, that depends upon what? That depends upon the of the electrolyte. What is rho? Rho is, is equal to resistivity of the electrolyte. It's a very interesting one, you know. The resistivity is zero, then also there will be no no crevice corrosion. Resistivity is too high, is confined to the mouth of this actually. Okay, so essentially it depends upon the resistivity of the electrolyte as well. 
So, put it in simple terms the oxygen concentration decreases from the mouth the interior the galvanic interaction between the cathode and the anode decreases from here to this. So, there are two opposing factors somewhere in between maximum crevice corrosion occurs. So, this is an important one ok. So, that is why you, if, you, if you just look at the some data. So, this is a typical gasket corrosion ok and this is your stainless steel clad this is of course, is steel uh, you know um, the shell here is cladded with a stainless steel. Now, it is here you have the environment right you see the attack here the attack is happening somewhere here right does not happen too far away does not happen very close to the it does not happen to the mouth it happens somewhere in between. So, the crevice corrosion normally occurs below the mouth of the crevice because that is optimized sensation taking place because you need a electrochemical driving force between the cathode and the anode on one hand the other hand the oxygen solubility I mean also the, the, the content of oxygen also decreases as you move from the mouth of the crevice to the center of the crevice. So, that that is that is how you see that the crevice corrosion always occurs um, below the mouth of the crevices. I hope you understand and uh, this one is very important actually ok. you are talking about this one or another yeah yeah this is you know you know see it is a shell actually you know the shell it is not a tube huh? it is a shell. Yeah is this is a, this is a gasket no I mean see this is the you know in a heat exchanger you know um, in a heat exchanger, if you just look at the heat exchanger, not good. Oh, okay. this is called what this is called as a header called shell and you have not exactly but here you will have of course, tubes. All these tubes are going over like this ok. So, in this is any so, this is the what we are seeing here is this joint huh? So, this what you are seeing here <laughs> is this joint ok. So, it is a flange you see these are place where you put the bolts and you fasten that actually right ok. So, it is a it is a header that that has suffered the corrosion and ok and through this what happens now through this you have a sea water right. Now, the sea water here is flowing through the cell side, the tube may be some other process liquid No, it may be some hydrocarbon or whatever that flows into that actually ok. So, here the, the coolant is the sea water that sea water is flowing through the headers uh, uh, yeah and, and then through the shell and the tube I think there are some process liquid in the um, of any in a any given refinery actually ok. So, what you are referring is this this joint ok which is a a flange joint taking place from this is it is it fine yeah the corrosion has occurred because of sea water because of sea water this was cladded with 2507 2 plus grade stainless steels ok. You will see later that when you talk about pitting corrosion this duplex stainless steel has got 
high resistance to heating corrosion ok vortex actually. And you clad it because you, 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 you can't use a whole thickness of duplex stainless steel is expensive right. You, you, you just go for a 3 millimeter uh, clad because the basic carbon steel is, is cheaper for us to do that. So, that is about the about the uh, crevice. The next important thing is the environment. When you say environment, we normally refer the bulk only. We are not referring the environment in the crevice because the environment in the crevice is generated by the crevice by itself. That depends upon the, the metal you are dealing with. Of course, it has a bearing with the bulk electrolyte, ok. But still, you could have vastly different electrolyte in the crevice as compared to the electrolyte composition in the bulk actually ok. So, when you look at the environment it is the oxygen content pH chlorides present in the in this actually the temperature If you want you can add agitation or otherwise. The other related parameters what is that like diffusion convection, but all relate interrelate to each other ok and biological factors. When I say biological or fouling, you can put the word fouling actually. Generally, we can say that when you decrease the pH, crevice corrosion. increases. Similarly, the temperature crevice corrosion increases. Chloride crevice corrosion increases. Which one? Yeah, there may be some diffusion increasing ok but that is not that is not going to be in commensurate with a the passive film destruction the passive film would destroy in fact if you look at titanium let's let's take this case of titanium titanium in ambient sea water resistant to crevice corrosion. You rise the temperature at high temperatures titanium is prone. The reason being the chloride attacks the film the passive film and exposes the bare metal and so what happens? The crevice corrosion occurs. So, we will see this the role of metallurgy in in, uh, in crevice corrosion we see later how does how does the uh, the metallurgy of the alloy can influence the crevice corrosion we can see later how I mean those things we will see later. So, at this point it is sufficient to to understand that the passive film stability depends upon the temperature in addition to the environment. Chlorides attack the passive film, you rise the temperature, the fitting potential drops significantly. 
So, the film gets damaged and so metal becomes active. So, there is going to be crevice corrosion occurring. Essentially, in the crevice, if you are able to make the metal passive, very stable, then what happens? You may have differential aeration, but still you will not get a crevice corrosion at all, right. So, the crevice corrosion also depends upon you know in addition to deaeration and all, but if the metal can be made inherently resistant to corrosion, then the crevice corrosion resistance can be very high possible to do that, ok. That is why the metallurgy is being developed actually, ok. So, titanium generally is very good, you see what application no problem does not pit and all, but the temperature is increased. What is the, what does it mean? Assume that I use an heat exchanger in a sea water, sea water is used to cool the heat exchangers, right. Suppose the temperature of of the sea water is I say 70, 80 degree Celsius or maybe 100 degree Celsius, probably the titanium will also start undergoing crevice attack or the temperature is or in some situations where the the it is not necessarily sea water, it, it can be uh, you know a, a gas turbine operating in the naval ship or a ship for example you use titanium alloys and then if salts go and deposit the temperature of these components 120, 200, 250 Celsius they undergo crevice corrosion. So, the crevice corrosion would also depend upon the stability of the passive film and that depends upon the environment pH. In fact, same thing if you if you increase the if you lower the pH the passive film stability comes down. So, crevice corrosion is now increasing at all. So, they are of course, interrelated to each other. That, that we can we can say ok. So, um, these are the parameters. The other important parameter in the <laughs> solution is the resistivity. So, very interesting thing resistivity is a very interesting one. We just uh, made a very passing remark earlier right. Look at the resistivity. Let us take the case of I think you guys are all familiar with the, the polarization curves of if the oxygen concentration is more start passivating, if the oxygen concentration is little less right this is the your wise mouth and this is, is your crevice. Can you say that? Okay. So, what does it mean? So, this is the place where this is the place where the potential is let us say there to be negative place potentially is relatively positive ok. This corresponds to this, this corresponds to this correct or not. What moves the potential from here to this? It is oxygen that makes the potential to move from here to this right. If I have an external cathode, if I raise the potentials, can this move up or not? Assume that there is no oxygen present, if I have an external cathode, I apply a voltage, can this move up or not? That is what you do in anodic protection, right? You just move it. So, that means if this is the cathode, can this cathode make this anode to move up to this? Can it move? In principle, yes, right? If I have a same metal, one is positive, another negative, this guy will start lifting this up and this guy will start lifting this down, right? Moving down, both are possible, right? If this guy has to have negative here, positive here, then there has to be resistance between these two, you know, between these two places, there has to be a resistance. The resistance is 0 or less, what happened now? The anode and cathode will become almost like similar only. 
So, this guy also start passivating in principle possible that means the resistance of the electrolyte is very important. If there is no resistance substantial resistance the crevice corrosion will not exist. One of the reasons why crevice corrosion occurs is that it happens in the low resistivity electrolyte ok. So, if the, that means if the resistivity increases the crevice corrosion increases because the it keeps the anode and the cathode alive all the time they do not allow them to make them one unit right not possible to happens. So, this is one of the important parameters in having the crevice corrosion. In fact, people model crevice corrosion they take this into account in terms of how the crevice corrosion occurs. So, in principle if I give you resistivity you give all this I can even find out at which place the, the crevice corrosion is going to be maximum right. So, these are the things that you know that happens in in a in, in typical crevice corrosion of of metals. I hope you understand this concepts here. The resistivity of the electrolyte is another important parameter in deciding the extent of crevice corrosion the metal can have. In addition to chemistry of the electrolyte we talked about like the pH, the chlorides and uh, you know in addition to that the resistivity is equally important ok. I hope you follow what I have been just saying. You have anybody has a question? No problem. So, that is about the, the environment and uh, ok. Now, so let us look at the, the electrochemical parameter we have been just discussing now so far right. Let us look at the electrochemical parameters in the ok. Let us take this electrochemical parameters. It happens in the passive system right. So, that means you would have Now, I am going to draw a few uh, schematic diagrams to show how the electrochemical parameters become very important in deciding the crevice corrosion resistance of metals ok. This is alloy 1, alloy 2. Now, this is the outside the crevice. this is inside the crevice. Tell me what happens. In the case of alloy 2 the passage potential is lower not higher. Yeah the passage potentially is, is is you know is low it, it is or the, the 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 range over which the passage occurs is much much more as compared to alloy 1 right. Alloy 1 passivates here and alloy 2 passivates here right. It in fact it has it has it passivates even at a more negative potential ok. I want to answer from you people. Now, this is given this you know now we know the mechanism how the crevice corrosion gets initiated for example. Now, what happens the alloy 1 alloy 2? It is not complex it is very simple. Hmm. 
yeah you start telling more and more i mean what 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 more you find here in this you take the case of alloy 1 alloy 2 what difference does it make if you form a crevice with alloy 1 and you form alloy with crevice crevice 2 okay i mean i mean you form a crevice with alloy 2 for example okay both are, both are formed as a crevices right so what happens Yeah. In alloy 2, what happens? In alloy, see this is the this is the cathodic curve within the crevice, the cathodic curve outside the crevice here, right. So, alloy 1, alloy 2. Now, you should must, must be easy for you to tell how the alloy 1 and alloy 2 will behave outside the crevice and inside the crevice. Also, the crevice what happens to alloy 1 and alloy 2? Both are passive adding, right? Within the crevice, what happened? Yeah? Alloy 1 will remain in the will will go to it will go to active region, right? What happened to alloy, alloy, alloy 2 then? Alloy 2 is still remain in the passive state right. So, that means why does it happen? You look at this now, what is why does it happen? Well, you know this polarization because what are these things? Use the right terminologies. Yeah, so the, so the critical content is right, it is a critical condensity right. I see of the alloy 1 and Okay, I C of the alloy two. It's a simple, right? It is not even a magic, huh? So it's a simple one. So that means the the electrochemical parameter influences. Similarly, what the Rothi has been talking about. Suppose if I move this the passive potential to higher and higher, you will see that the crevice corrosion tendency will keep increasing now. Right? Or uh, the ability to passivate at negative potential makes the alloy more stable. So, the two parameters that are important one is I C, if I C increases, what will happen to, what will happen to crevice corrosion? Corrosion? I want a clear answer. Increase. increase, right? There is corrosion increases. Similarly, E passivation increases, the crevice corrosion again increases. You want to make it more and more lower. So, the electrochemical parameters are, are, are a very important in deciding whether the corrosion. Uh, crevice corrosion will occur or not, if it occurs at what rate they really occur. Having said that, the metallurgy are related to each other right, then because the metallurgy. Of course, the composition. What are the compositions? The co all compositions that lead to passivation make the alloy prone to crevice corrosion. Right? But the compositions that makes the film stable alloy resistant to corrosion
and makes it you know and makes it spontaneously passive. If you have all these characters, then what happens? Then the curve is corrosion resistance. increases right so this, this general thing we can we can talk about right so those elements which are doing the job okay you will able to see that these things really can happen so there are certain um, some empirical rules uh, which talks about this okay and you say that elements like chromium, molybdenum, nitrogen in stainless steels, and nickel base alloys. Okay. They, they all help. improve corrosion resistance. I just give one example. In all these cases, molecular content increases okay, from 1 to 3. Same is true, of course, with, with the chromium and, and also with the nitrogen. Okay. They all can change the passivation behavior quite significantly, and, and so. So, if you look at the many alloys they are developed like you know if you compare 316, 304, 316 is better than 304 and 904L is better than 317 and 254SMO is better than 904L. So, 654SMO is better than 254SMO. So, all these are happening because of modifying the composition of of the stainless steels okay in order to improve the passivation behavior and more so the critical condensity and as well as the overall resistance of the alloy to corrosion corrosion okay so um, so we have seen now the the electrochemical parameters of um, of the uh, corrosion of the metals and and these electrochemical parameters are related to the metallurgical parameters. Of course, they are all related to the environment actually right and see for example, you take 304 and you carry out a polarization studies in let us say about let us say about 500 ppm of chloride solution of pH 7 and and you determine the critical condensity, passive condensity, pitting potential all the stuffs and then you lower the pH from 7 to let us say about 3, you are going to have increase in critical condensity, increase in passive uh, current density and also uh, increase in the passivation potentials and so it also depends upon the environment as, as much ok. So, um, uh, as much as the alloy chemistry uh, they are all interrelated to each other. Uh, and so, so, so it cannot be seen that in isolation right it has to be seen 
together when you talk about material selection for curvaceous corrosion resistance. So, if you have an idea about the, uh, the environment then you can probably predict um, you know uh, when what kind of materials can be used for curvaceous corrosion resistance uh, for a given application. The, um, the next thing that we need to be looking at is what is called as the prevention you can now start uh, you know your own things right. Um, because you know the principle and mechanisms you know the factor controlling the risk corrosion. So, writing I mean finding out preventive measures are not that difficult. The first and foremost is um, is that we can look at the, the right alloy combinations. So, cannot change the engineering you know design or if you can avoid joints such as rivets, flanges etcetera they form crevices around them. Then what do you what do you need to do go for? welding if the design promise. This is the crevice former right. What else form the crevices? We said about fouling right. So, avoid fouling. Use filter. And if you are going to use a mechanical joints, then you are going to use gaskets, it must be solid non absorbent gaskets. See, you know about um, you know that. Uh, asbestos right. Nowadays people do not use asbestos this is this cotton thinning right. You take asbestos ok and you take a Teflon. What is Teflon? It is it's a commercial name of PTFE right. What is PTFE? Fluoride, huh? ok. Poly tetra fluoroethylene, right. Ok. So, um, here asbestos they absorb water, moisture, whatever kind of thing, here you know, it does not. You can use a sealant, right? If you have a problem, you can go for a sealant. If you have a sealant, then all these gaps can be filled up. This is done in aircraft industries. Use a nice sealant. Well, we can keep adding many kind of um, variations that you can do. I, I do not want to um, spend more time on this because you should be able to devise uh, methods by yourself. I will go to the next method is the testing and evaluation or whatever. I would recommend you to uh, go through this article uh, by R M Cain evaluation of uh, crevice corrosion this is an ASM 
international is a metal sandbook volume 13 ninth edition huh? is published by ASM international right uh, you will also have it in our library ok. Article by it is a very nice article uh, which uh, talks about the complexities involved in designing the crevice corrosion. And now, uh, you need to understand the first of all the concept. What is that here? You have to form a crevice. When I say a crevice that it has its own geometry all this a crevice gap. So, there are several variations that you get and you may choose a sample which is uh, not flat versus the sample which is quite flat. So, do you think the results will be similar the, the sample with the flat and sample will become rough sample will the crevice attack will be the similar or different. So, where do you think the crevice attack will be more? So, the crevice gap you know may be more or much more flat sample than on the rough sample ok. So, the tight crevice will increase the crevice corrosion rate and the loose crevice will make the rate of crevice reduce. And I can form a crevice between two metals or I can form a crevice with a, a non metal like a Teflon. So, a proper designing of crevice corrosion setup is very important ok. The formation of crevice and is one thing. The second is selection of the environment and you can also look at uh, the, the standard no ASTM G 48 talks about the this thing here ok. It is uh, it is talking about measuring the critical critical crevice temperatures here it talks about measurement of uh, critical crevice temperatures. And here the solution is um, 6 percent particular solution, the pH is about 1.2. Why do you take ferric chloride? You take ferric chloride because it is a good oxidizer, ok. It can aggravate, it can initiate the corrosion process much quicker, much faster than simply immersing in say a sodium chloride solution. So, ferric chloride is, is a good oxidizer, it is, is an accelerated test that people do and generally the temperature they chosen are 22 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius and 50 minus 2 degrees Celsius and they expose for about 72 hours ok. And then they look at the weight change. It's a simple test actually. Um, what is done here you know you, you, you can in principle you can you can do uh, set up uh, you know in, in any of your, your own labs right. What you can do is see for example, we can you can take a stainless steel you know disc like that. I can have a Teflon disc on this side, Teflon disc on the other side, I can do that. I can have a, a rubber band holding like that. The rubber band is tight enough to secure and it also forms a crevice right. So, you, you have a rubber band like this ok. This is the steel, this is your 
Teflon disc. So, you immerse in, in ferricloid solution and um, the temperature of your own interest ok and measure after 72 hours see what happens uh, if there is a corrosion or not. If there is no corrosion that means at that temperature the material is uh, you know resistance to uh, crevice corrosion. Now, they also made a little bit more sophisticated um, setup that is called as multi crevice assembly. Where in a single experiment you can have many crevices formed. See here in this case you have only two crevices right? one on the right and another one on the left you have, but I can also have a multi crevice assembly by taking a Teflon disc and I uh, make uh, various grooves right. I can just groove like this and take out. See, this is the groove here, right? So, I can make uh, several grooves like that, ok. You can make as much as um, this is called a, this is called as a plate 2, right? So, you can have about 20 plateaus, you can have 20 plateaus, you can have. 20 plateaus means you have about 20, um, 20 uh, grooves that you have. And what you can do? You can take a sample and you can put one assembly here, other assembly here. So, you are going to have about 40 grooves. That means, you are going to have about 40 crevices are formed in one single test right. But each other this is the crevice right, this is the crevice here, it is a potential crevice because the liquid can go through this, go through this. So, here is a crevice here, it is a crevice here. So, when it when it sticks on the surface ok and they form the crevice. So, there are about 20 crevices formed on one side, one face of it, the other face of the stainless steel sample you have 20 more, you have 40 grooves are formed and you can now uh, expose it in the um, in the in the ferricular solution, okay, and you can you can get the attack, uh, you know, see done. And this is something like an experiment done in, uh, in in our own lab here by one of the PhD students. You see here, okay, yes, this is the disc. Now you can see this here. These are all the attack. These are the attacked portions. See the attack portion. These are the attacked portions because of the crevices. See the attack attack is more and where there is a groove there is no attack. So, this is a groove there is no attack this is the plateau region this attack you see here the plat the attack is on the on or broader huh, compared to the grooves ok. So, you see kind of see here the attack attack here there is no attack here. So, the crevice is taken place in this case is it is done in the in the lab and you can see this alloy is 19 chromium 18 manganese 0 0.69 uh, nitrogen is you know the attack is much less you can see here uh, do not see much attack here uh, 1 or 2, um, but 14 chromium 8 manganese is uh, attack is quite severe and 316 the extent of attack is less now. So, that means you can able to uh, evaluate the uh, crevice corrosion resistance of the lie, but here see here here it has been exposed only for 24 hours not for 72 hours actually. So, there is no no order and fast tool when you are going to allow develop an alloy, but then if you are going to follow the ASTM standard you can strictly follow the ASTM standard. Then only you can compare between the results obtained in, in the different laboratories now. So, these are the kind of uh, things that you can see and which are very useful in determining the crevice corrosion resistance of these alloys, but it will be very interesting. Now, 304 stainless steels can suffer crevice corrosion at sub zero temperatures. Can you imagine? 
the crevice corrosion is much more severe even compared to pitting corrosion other forms of corrosion. So, sub zero temperature means you can imagine that you know even even below the ice you have some chlorides the um, 304 stainless steel can suffer the crevice corrosion of course, the time taken for crevice corrosion is, is going to be more actually. Now, so people use this as a criteria uh, for the crevice corrosion. Now, uh, this is called people also use term which is called as um, this is called a crevice corrosion index. So, C C i is given as uh, the multiplication of these two and S corresponds to the number of site attacked, number of sites attacked and D is the depth of attack. So, this is a kind of index uh, people use um, to quantify the crevice corrosion resistance of the metals actually ok. This uh, one more uh, I before I close it um, is uh, the test is electrochemical test. You have uh, known a potential dynamic polarization curves are of that kind right. Um, the laboratory uh, to look at the passivation behavior of uh, the passive metals. Now, in this case what you do is the specimen uh, what, what people do in this case in the specimen you 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 have you, you have a crevice here right. Suppose you have a sample of here in this case uh, it is a it is about 16 mm diameter and you have a Teflon cover this with the Teflon here. PDFE right and uh, this is your electrode in you carry out potential dynamic polarization. in the anodic side only not in the cathodic side anodic side do that. And um, if there is a crevice corrosion and, and what is done here ok. So, do a potential dynamic polarization and you reverse this you get like this ok. And this is called as hysteresis and higher this higher the character higher is the uh, alloy prone to crevice corrosion. So, what is done here is um, here before you do the scan you hold the sample for about 1 hour in the medium that will start establishing the crevice actually crevice corrosion right and then scan anode scan you do 0.6 volts per hour scan they do that and reverse the scan at uh, 5 5 milliamperes 
of current. So, so that means this current is what this current is is, is equal to 5 milliamperes. Okay. So, it is a log i yeah, not small i because the sample uh, here we have taken uh, what is the dimension of the sample here the sample dimension diameter is equal to 16 millimeter right. So, uh, so the current density is going to be different. So, this this hysteresis is an indication you compare the different alloys like alloys uh, alloy 276 or maybe 304 and uh, so you compare with that alloy and see how uh, the newly developed alloy performs. And 304 of course, is, is, is not an alloy meant for crevice corrosion resistance C276 is supposed to be the one of the best alloys from the crevice corrosion resistance point of view. So, this is how we can do that, but you can always have several variations you can carry out a potential static test you know this, you know. And basically, you have a crevice and and, and how the crevice affects the electrochemical parameters of uh, these things. So, with this uh, have any questions are there anybody has questions. Yeah, you see for example, I had the hysteresis character right I mean you can have something like that right. You can have something like this ok. So, this alloy is not passivating at all you look at this and look at this and look at this and this alloy is, is more prone to attack. We will see this uh, a little detail when you when you talk about the pitting corrosion ok. So, this the the the, the area of the studies you see here as increases the alloy becomes more prone to pitting corrosion I am sorry yeah pitting corrosion as well as crevice corrosion anyway. They are not I mean you will find uh, later that the um, the alloy is uh, you know resistance to crevice corrosion would also be resistance to pitting corrosion as well ok. So, ok. So, with this we will uh, close the discussion related to crevice corrosion and uh, yeah let us see if you have any questions uh, think about it in the next class when we meet we will discuss on this topic. <laughs>